For yet another example, let's look at the prehistory of this subject called fractals. The subject of fractals emerged sometime after the middle of the 20th century, but there were many developments in mathematics which led up to it and which are now recognized as part of the field. And a key example, one that we're going to study in some detail, is named for the mathematician Georg Cantor, 1845 to 1918. We'll call it the Cantor set, and let's find out what it's about. So as in the construction of the gasket that we already know, we're going to start with something and then we'll take stuff away. And now what we start with here is very simple. We're just going to begin with a line segment. That's it. Now I've drawn it with some thickness to it so that you can see it, but I just want to think I've just got all the points on the line between two endpoints. And we're going to actually use coordinates. We'll introduce coordinates here by labeling the two ends as the numbers 0 and 1. So we should think we've got a little bit of the real number line. We've got all the numbers from 0 to 1. And is it, as in our previous constructions, we're going to call this the seed. This is what we start with. And it may be a strange term because we're not actually going to grow something from the seed. We're actually going to take stuff away from the seed. Now what we do at first will sound extremely simple. What we do is we take out the middle third. Now we said we were working with the line segment going from 0 to 1, so the middle third would be between the numbers 1 third and 2 third. And we remove all of those numbers, we remove all of those points. To be precise about this, let's say that we're moving the open middle third. So that is to say we're going to remove all the numbers or all the points which are strictly between 1 third and 2 thirds, but 1 third itself will still be there and 2 thirds will still be there. So we take out the middle third, and what we're left with are the other two thirds. Now these are closed line segments. There's one going from 0 to 1 third, and there's another one going from 2 thirds to 1 third. So we have now have two shorter line segments, each of which has length 1 third. Can you guess what we do next? I bet you can. We're going to remove the middle third from each of those. So on the left, we had the segment from 0 to 1 third, and we take away the middle of that. That'll be taking away all the points or all the numbers between 1 ninth and 2 ninths. Over on the right, we had the segment going from 2 thirds to 1 third. We take out its middle third, which goes from 7 ninths to 8 ninths. Again, we're taking out the open middle third, so we always leave the end points as part of what we still have. Now, of course, you can see, having done that, we now have four line segments. So at this stage, we've got a union of four closed line segments. And what do we do? Well, we remove the open middle third of each of those four segments. So I will just talk about one example here. We previously had a segment which went from the number two-thirds up to the number seven-ninths, which is also twenty-one twenty-sevenths. What we do is we remove the open middle third of that, which goes from nineteen twenty-sevenths to twenty twenty-sevenths. Okay, and we do that with the other four line segments that we had. And so, of course, as we can see, we're doubling the number of line segments at each stage. Now we have eight very short line segments. I say they're line segments, but it looks kind of funny now in the picture. Because I had some initial thickness to the line segment, it now looks as if they're rectangles or squares. But remember, we're just showing that thickness so that we can see it. It's actually just part of the initial line segment that we had to begin with. So what we have is some subset of the initial line segment from 0 to 1. And it consists of eight quite short line segments. Quite short here means that each of them has length 1 27th. And we could go through, as I've done, and show you what each of the endpoints are for each of those eight. I'm, I'm just showing some of them, but you could see all of them. Okay, now we continue this process on 
and on and on. That is to say, we do this for infinitely many stages. So at each stage, we have a certain number of line segments, which are closed line segments. And we take out the open middle thirds, and that doubles the number of line segments we have. Of course, they're not just placed at random. They're in very specific positions. At each stage, we will have a collection of intervals. And to get to the next stage, we always remove the open middle third. And we do this forever. The points that remain after doing that process infinitely many times, those points form the Cantor set. Now, you might think, well, there's not very much there. This is a very sparse, powdery, dusty kind of set. There's hardly anything there. And if that's your intuition, well, you're right. It, it, it's, it's a very sparse set. And your intuition will be reinforced and confirmed if I mention to you that if we add up the lengths of all the th segments that we threw away in this construction, we actually get the number one, which is the length of the initial line segment that we started with. Now, to add up those lengths is a rather sophisticated process. It involves the summing of what's called an infinite series, something that one learns in the second semester calculus course, if you take calculus. We won't have to do that here, but I'm just pointing out we're throwing out an awful lot. And if we add up the lengths of everything that we threw out, we get the length 1. That would suggest that we threw everything away, but in fact, we didn't throw everything away. It's possible to throw out all these line segments of total length 1 and still have something left over amazingly. And I can actually point you to points. I can name specific points that really are in the Cantor set. To begin with, I can just say, well, anything that was ever an end point at any stage of any one of the line segments is still there. So let me take, for example, the number 2 thirds. Okay, So 2 thirds was obviously there in the beginning. It's somewhere between 0 and 1. When we threw out the open middle third, we said to ourselves, we're not going to throw out the endpoints. So that meant that we kept the number 2 thirds. And in fact, we never throw it away later. OK, it's always there forever at every stage. And so it's there in the limit in the Cantor set. The same thing we can say about the endpoint 2027, as indicated here. So all of those are part of the Cantor set. But that's not all. There are others. Now, I just want to give you one specific number, one specific number that is in the Cantor set. And it may be somewhat surprising, given the fact that we seem to be working here with powers of 3. I'm going to name something that has nothing to do with powers of 3. And I'm thinking about the number 1 fourth. I claim that that number is in the Cantor set. So let's think about that a bit. Well, it was certainly there at the beginning, right? It's somewhere between 0 and 1. Well, let's go on to the next stage. For the next stage, we threw out the open middle third. The open middle third goes from 1 third to 2 thirds. But 1 fourth survived because it is less than 1 third. It is in the left piece at this stage. At the next stage, it turns out it's in the right piece. In fact, let me move to the next slide and show you what's going on. As I've said already, the number 1 fourth is between 0 and 1 third. So when we throw away the first middle, it survives in the left piece. Now we throw out the middle of the, that piece that's still there, the left piece. This time, 1 fourth survives because it's in the right piece. I'm saying it's in the right piece of what was the left piece at the previous stage. You can see it if you look at the picture. So I'm, I'm looking at the third stage here. And I'm saying that what I'm looking at is a point that's still surviving. It's in the right piece of the left piece. And then we go another stage, and this time it survives because it's in the left piece. And in fact, very cunningly, as it turns out, the number 1 fourth manages to survive because it's alternately in the left piece, and then the right piece, and then the left piece, and then the right piece, and then the left piece, and, the, and then the right piece forever. It never gets thrown out, and therefore it is a point or a number in the Cantor set.